Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and happy first quarter of 2023. Welcome back to the Texas Apartment Association's Education Foundation Series, Hints from HR. It's been probably about six months since I've had the pleasure of saying that. <laughs> I was worried I was going to get tongue-tied, but here we are. You did great, Blaze. You did great. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. I'm Blaze Fidelari. I'm representing Gemstar Construction out of Houston, Texas. Today, uh, we have, as always, our Vice President of the Texas Apartment Association with Education Foundation out of Austin, Becca Ramadi. Hello, Hello. Becca. We have uh, our beautiful Director of Brookfield Properties, and she's currently broadcasting from uh, Tennessee. I am yeah. live in Tennessee right now. You never know where I'm going to be at, at all, so I like to keep it spicy. Welcome, Nicole Block. Yeah. And Becca, I want to I want to see if you can maybe introduce our brand new co-host that we're going to bring into our program, and we're all very excited for it. And I think we're all uh, ready for this. So where's the drum roll? Hold on. So we, I think everybody's feeling busier than ever, and you know Nicole and Blaze have done an amazing job of being co-hosts of this show for almost two years, I think, yeah. and. When we started talking about getting this, getting the band back together, I thought maybe it would be helpful to add some additional voices to the show so that when Nicole is in who knows where and Blaze is helping his customers there and here, we could have a little extra help. Also yeah. bring in some new voices, new experiences, and new points of view. Um, so we looked long and hard and found who we think is a really perfect person. Um, you, if you know him, you love him. He gives a great hug. He's probably bought you a drink at the bar, and you've or had two. a dance or two with him. Yeah. It is no other, no one other than Billy Griffin with "We Do Trash" out of Houston. Go, oh, Billy, aka Mr. Griffin. <laughs> Welcome, yeah. Billy. Well, thank you all very much. I'm super excited to be part of the team. Uh, this has kind of been a build up to this point, and, and excited that. Uh, yeah, I've, I've watched your shows and it's been great. The, the, the tips that y'all have given, the hints that you've given, the experience, uh, you know, personal experience always helps so many people because there's so many of us just trying to figure it out these days. So thank you for including me in the team. Yes. I'm, I'm glad that you gave us all accolades too, because we were all wondering how much that you looked up to us. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Blaze, Blaze you're way taller than me. I look up to you every time. Yeah, every everyone time looks up to Blaze. Up. He's like eight feet tall. So yeah, we all look up to Blaze. I'll work on that. I'll work on that. Billy, I want to get into maybe quickly a little bit of your story, your multifamily career and what that has looked like. Um, and then I, I also want to, if anybody's listening live right now, and uh, Billy said he was going to give virtual dances at the end of this program. <laughs> so if you want to dance with Billy, we can make that happy for you. But Billy, tell us a little bit about your uh, history of multifamily, please. Uh, sure. I, 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 it's only been in the industry about six months. And uh, no, I'm kidding completely, obviously. Clearly, you're a liar, too. Come on now. Literally, this is fixed. We're a month or two away from me being 32 years in the business. And uh, I started, uh, for some that, that don't know, I started with a company called Century AC Supply back when they only had a couple of locations. I worked with them for 20 years and we grew them from a few locations to many, many locations. Uh, after 20 years of working there, decided I wanted to, to venture out. I'm still really close and good friends with all of the my family at Century. I uh, had a little brief uh, two-year two uh, stint in the flooring business. Uh, worked for Criterion Brock for a couple of years, trying to get them going. And uh, for the last almost 10 years of my life, I've been with Camp Construction. We built them from a couple locations to nationwide as well. So kind of my, uh, my forte has been building teams, uh, putting teams together, uh, uh, entrusting in people, uh, reinforcing their skill sets, uh, you know, and, and, and then getting them out and letting them go do. And uh, uh, it's, it's been a great ride. I've been fortunate to be on the uh, Houston Department Association board for 20 years um, and, and been involved with uh, the Houston Department Association, everything from so many of the committees, whether it's the trade show committee or the golf committee or the go-getter committee or the ambassador committee uh, to, to the, you know, the legislative a part, you know, as well. So uh, just love uh, the, my multifamily family, and I'm super excited to, to continue to stay in this. I, I, I said 32 years when I started just, just a little bit ago, but it has gone by super fast. It's been really, really quick. The, the relationships, the friendships uh, have been just amazing. So it's, it's been a, a really fun ride. And can you tell us where you are now? Yeah. I am currently at, at just literally uh, three months into We Do Trash. 
Yeah. Uh, I talked a little bit about kind of what I did at Century, and, and we started with just a few locations, and we grew them uh, to, to many locations around the country. Um, when Then when I went to camp, we did the same thing. We had three locations, and we grew them to 18 locations. And so now that we do trash, and, and I was, you know, Nicole's in Nashville. I was in Nashville last week, actually the last two weeks, yeah. and uh, kind of one of, I'm, I'm the VP of business development. So we are going into a lot of new markets. We will be um, in, you know, Phoenix and Atlanta and Orlando, and, and, and we're going to be growing just like we did some of these other companies that that I did in the past. So I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of the We Do Trash family. And again, it's part of the HAA. I, I, I tell everybody, it's while we're all friendly competitors in this industry, more of us all get together and, and ask about each other's kids and families. And, you yeah. know, when we're going through crisis or trouble or struggles, we're always there to pick each other up, even if it is somebody that's that's a direct competitor. I mean, Blaze and I were competitor for years, but we still were very friendly and kind to each other. And and I think that's what's so unique about this industry is is that people really care. Um, you know, you can kind of you know tongue in cheek, go, oh, I don't like that person because they stole some business. But at the end of the day, we really do care about um, the goodwill and the people. And there's so much business out there for people in this industry. If you're good at what you do, you'll succeed. Well, and for this to be, you know, obviously the Texas Department Association's Education you know, Foundation podcast. I mean, I think that what you're saying is, is we are competitors. We're also very collegial and we all work for the same industry. So my success is your success, is, is, is Blaze's success and, and the association's success. So I think we're all very much so invested. And so it is, it is kind of a different animal. I mean, of course, we all love it. We've been around a long time. Um, but I think that, you know, you'll bring a lot of, of that, you know, breadth of experience and, and your depth of knowledge to this uh, podcast. So we're really excited. Well, thank you for saying that. But really quickly, I tell people all the time, it's like, I, I've done this a long time and we I've made a ton of mistakes and learned from mistakes, but I continue to make mistakes. I continue oh, to yeah. ask questions and learn. I don't know everything there is out there and I don't claim to, but I sure love listening and I sure love talking about it. And I love sharing my experiences with people if, if they can help a little bit, but I also want people to share experiences with me because that's, that's how we all truly learn. I think one of the most amazing things is I had an opportunity to talk to Billy before and he said out of all of his accomplishments through his multifamily career, being on Hints from HR right now is his biggest accomplishment. So <laughs> Billy was that is 100% wow. true. Yeah. And Man. also to double down on the, on the good people in our industry, right, is uh, we want our industry to be filled with good people with big yes. hearts that, that genuinely care. So yeah, for sure. know, that's, that's well, competitor, uh, non-competitor. We just want good people and good things to happen to all of them. And all Absolutely. the things that Billy talked about as reasons why he loved this industry is really what the Education Foundation is trying to do with its Room to Grow campaign of sure. bringing new people into the industry and getting the word out about why the people who are in this industry love it so much. And so that's really part of what um, this podcast does and what the Room to Grow campaign does and, and really our organizing principle for why we're here is to spread that information, share that, and get more people to know about the career opportunities and the career path that are in the industry. So I want yeah. to take Billy off the hot seat, put Nicole on it real quick, and the audience too. I'm comfortable here. It's fine. I'm used to you. <laughs> so I, I want to find out what we're seeing. I know we're all super busy. We, we talked yeah. about it on the top of the show. Uh, we can, we're going to continue to be busy. What are the trends though, and maybe possible other topics that we can talk about on this program going forward that we can help potential job seekers and current job seekers, operators and suppliers as ways to you know, look and uh, analyze the multifamily industry. And I wanna talk first on the operator side. So Nicole, if you wanna maybe talk briefly about some of the trends that you're seeing right now. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think that you know some of the things that we're seeing as far, let's just talk about hiring. You know, you know, We'll talk about kind of the tenants of you know, kind of the three buckets we're going to start putting things into this year. But, you know, we're recruiting talent and we're trying to find talent that's out there. We all talked about, again, last year, the great resignation and the quiet quitting and, and seeing all of that happening in our industry. We saw pay scales like you have a variability and we saw people looking at value in a different way. So what I'm starting to see probably over the past maybe two to three months is that some of those people that made those jumps are probably realizing they maybe made a a, a gut punch or a, a quick decision and and they really do care about that culture and they really do care about the future growth and development and the almighty dollar there's other things to value so we're seeing more qualified candidates coming into the the candidate pool i would say for my for my positions i'm hiring for 
Um, so I think that the things we talk about as far as being ready with, you know, what is your culture? You know, what are you talking about? How are you recruiting? How are you, you know, retaining talent? How are you, you know, keeping everyone engaged and motivated is, is, is really more important now more than ever because people are looking again, but they're looking with a more um, selective eye. So I would probably say I'm, I'm seeing that as a trend in, in hiring. And then I would also say just our market, um, I would probably say kind of slowed. I mean, debt markets change, interest rates are increasing. You saw people kind of like step back a little bit and get a little bit more cautious. Um, but I also will say that I think we're going to be really busy with apartment communities being bought and sold and getting back into that kind of shift by Q3 of next, uh, of this year, excuse me, gosh, we're already in 23. Um, so by Q3, so I think we have the next six months to get that bench ready. I think we have the next six months to get our industry is, you know, again, kind of stable in the lull of the chaos before we're right back in it. So I'd probably say those are the top two things I'm looking at. And then as leadership, just making sure that we're focused on strategy. You know, we're really trying to make sure that we're, you know, we're wagging the tail, not the tail wagging the dog. So I think that at my peers and even with my company, we've tried to be more consistent about putting processes in place, recovering from the last two years probably, um, and just attacking the year with more intention. So I'd probably say those are the two or three things on the operator side of the world that I'm seeing, um, but I'd love to hear about suppliers trends too. Yeah. I think it's insane that we're already almost closing out the first quarter. And, uh, and Billy, I do want to hear from you as well, because you just touched base on you're going to all these other markets right now and you're building up. So do you even maybe touch base on, do you see anything different from market to market as well? Texas yeah, I, and, you know, from, from a high level and consistently, you know, to Nicole's point, a lot of people are being cautious right now with the, you know, oh my gosh, interest rates, Fed's supposed to meet again today and maybe bump it again. And, you know, not as many properties are being sold. Uh, there have been, though, again, we're looking back to the last year, year and a half. A lot of people have changed companies because of the almighty dollar, dollar because the, the pool wasn't maybe, uh, or they, didn't, they weren't as comfortable in the, in, in the, in the role that they were in. And, and you, we're, we're seeing that there's definitely a lot of people that are cautious, but they're optimistically cautious. It's like, hey, look, we're, we're uh, you know, again, Nicole touched on it. We're seeing more qualified people coming back into the market, more qualified people coming into play, especially on a supplier side. And when you're looking at folks, um, you know, it's kind of nice to have somebody that, that they understand that, hey, you may come here and make a little less money, but the opportunity is going to be better. You're going to be happier. You're going to be more fulfilled in your life. And, and you know, it's going to be just a better overall move for you. Um, you know, market to market, the markets I've been in, I, I was out in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago, Nashville two weeks ago, and then back in Houston this week, Dallas for the trade show. But it's, it's again, it's pretty consistent. You're, you're, you're going to a market like Nashville where you're seeing a lot of cranes, you're seeing a lot of building, there's a lot of, you know, construction going on. Yes. And, and with that, so you're, you're like, all oh, these units are coming out and they're coming on, which will be great. But you're also hearing things are slowing down just a little bit there in Nashville. People are starting to get a little more cautious. And it's kind of the same thing we saw in Denver. I, you know, I remember flying into Denver two years ago, looking, I counted 36 cranes. And I can always tell when I go into a, a, a city and go, wow, I'm in X city and there's only four cranes, or I'm in this city and there's, yeah. oh my God, there's 30 cranes. That's not just multifamily, but a lot of it is. A lot of it could yeah. be multifamily. And you're seeing um, you know, a, a lot of growth. And those are, the, those are the cities that you're like, wow, we've got to really ramp up for people and start getting people hired because you're going to have all these units coming on. You're going to have all these people moving into these markets because it's the economy's rolling. Um, so, but, but people are also a little, little more, you know, cautious. I, I think that, um, you know, Nicole, you said Q3. And I think that a lot of people are saying, Hey, we get through this first quarter, which we're already surprisingly almost there. Yeah. Get into Q2, everybody kind of settles down a little bit after some of these trade shows hit. And you start seeing that people release the dollar a little bit more from a supplier side. They're starting to spend a little bit more. The yeah. CapEx budgets are starting to, Hey, we're going to go ahead and paint that. Now we thought we might not, or, hey, we're going to go ahead and spend that and do this renovation. We, we, you know, they held off maybe a little bit, but now they're like, we've got to do this because it's the right thing and the market's good. So, yeah. Well, and going back to your, the second part of your question, Blaze, as far as like, you know, again, the trends that we're seeing, but also kind of like, you know, what, what are we doing about it? You know, I know that, you know, we're, we've been talking about the resource center and we've been talking about, you know, some of the other topics as we're revamping kind of rebranding and refreshing our hints from HR because we have been doing it for two years um but, but the world has changed right and we went from from surviving to hopefully thriving like that's the goal right we want to you know so I think people's mindset has to change 
So I know that, you know, yeah, go ahead. You're, you're I think you what you said about companies being more intentional is perfect because that's yeah. what we want to do with this series as well. So in early January, uh, TAA Education Foundation launched a resource center. We wanted to make sure that all the materials that we've developed over the last few years were available to all TAA members. Yes. It is available via the TAA website, taa.org. And under TAA, under resources, you'll see TAA EF resources. Um, and you do have to log in to access it. Um, but it gives you information about how to get a get a login and a password if your company is a member. Right. Um, and when we built this resource center, we wanted to make sure that we were um, providing materials and resources that are beneficial to the membership, uh, operators and managers and suppliers mm -hmm. for recruiting new talent, for training talent, and for retaining new talent or talent in general. Yes. Because what we found is that Recruiting doesn't really matter if your people aren't happy and aren't going to be um, excited to bring someone else new into the industry. So for us to bring new people into the industry, the people who are already there need to feel fulfilled, need to feel um, empowered that they're learning, they're growing, they're giving back to their company, their company is giving to them. And so all these different pieces really clarified for what we are trying to do as an organization, which is help the members of TAA bring in the talent that they need to be successful. And, you know, as Billy was saying earlier, you know, it's really about the relationships, it's about the industry as a whole. And so we think that these materials, many of which are customizable uh, with your logo and your information on them, um, can really benefit and make a difference as you're out in the field recruiting talent at career fairs or have new hires looking for some extra information or you want to catch up on hints from hr every single episode is available right. to the watch. billy fan club needs to know where to go that's it's right to watch club. or listen to the episodes yeah. in the resource center we've also devoted the retained section to a lot of the things that we've talked about on this show so we had a, uh, a um, an episode last year focusing on state interviews. So we'll, we developed a whole retention uh, yeah. guide that included those that stay interview and what are the questions you have to ask and how can you get comfortable having those check ins and really understand where your employee is coming from and if they are interested if you think they're going to leave what do you need to do to put things in place to not you know be in, in free fall mode when they do leave. So there's so many resources there. We really want everyone to check that out um, at taa.org under resources. But we also wanted to use that framework to, um, to be more intentional with hints from HR. So the topics and the episodes that we'll be having are gonna focus on recruiting, training, and retention. Right, Because really, it's all so important. And the more we can give back and help our operators and managers and suppliers um, and maintenance teams and office teams, the better the whole industry is. So the TAA EF Resource Center is live right now. And again, to reiterate, Becca, we can find that at TAA.org. You go under resources, you click down to TAA EF Resource Center. Surprise. And you'll find all the fun stuff that could help you build the best teams possible. Uh, Becca and TAA team, thank you guys for putting that all together. And, uh, and Nicole, always uh, for the past Hints from HR episodes, great content, because I'm sure a lot of that went into all of it. <laughs> and really right, look forward to your future commentary to help <laughs> us continue to grow. I told you I've gone back and watched some of them again, just so I can you know, feel like I'm part of the team. So and, Yeah, well, and it is interesting too, Blaze, that I think that the a lot of the content we have been talking about for the past couple of years naturally kind of align into this bucket. And I think it's interesting that it's still very topical. And it also shows that it's timeless. Like this is something like leadership isn't something that you get up and do one day and you're like, I did it. And now I'm a leader. No, it's every single day. It's every decision you make. It's every, you know, it, it, it either brings you closer to your goal or further away with every decision that you make. So I was really proud really of all the content that we put out there because it was a good basis for this resource center and to kind of help, you know, but it shows us also that we're talking about the right things. 
you know, if it's something that, you know, that is important to everybody. So, and yeah, so thank you. That. Thank you yeah. too, Blaze. Yes. Absolutely. For, for whatever I provided, I hope it was useful in some degree. But I feel like the Resource Center too could be utilized even if, you know, you just need a brush up on some things or some new ideas in general. Love it. Um, so just feel free to you know, peruse the page and find uh, some information that could be useful to maybe some of the people above you, some of the people uh, to the side of you or uh, beneath that are up and coming and want to be leaders. So it, there's a lot of opportunity there and a lot of content. So well, please and, make and sure one you thing, know, One thing I was just thinking about too is when we're saying it's every single day, um, two quick two quick things. So even we had a new recruiter that joined our role and I just started working you know, with them. And uh, and I was, you know, just we're having, we're start struggling in some markets. I'm like, have you got on the assessment? And we lost Nicole. Oh, we yeah. lost her. You know, <laughs> this Tennessee technology trains up in the city right now. Maybe they hit one of the fiber optic cables. Pro that's probably right. what it was. She's at a, at a property that's just uh, do, doing great things. So technology is great when it works and it's a little scary right. when you kind of go, uh-oh. Right. There was well, one point where all your faces got frozen and I was like, am I still on here? You but, were frozen uh, for a minute, but yeah, you know, this is, what we, this is what we work with. We're used to this. We keep on moving. And I think She's about to come back in, but I think she's saying like, don't forget about it when you're onboarding people that the resource center can be that. It can be a tool that you can give to new employees. It can be something that you can share and they're gonna be thankful that you shared that with them too. Hi, Nicole. Hey guys, you know, Welcome so my back. internet just decided, it was like, you know what, you're done and you can and you can get back in, um, you know. <laughs> Mine usually says put another quarter in, so I have to put yeah. more quarters in. I mean, clear, bills, clearly so. I didn't pay the bills, guys. We talked about, you know, the money. I just paid it real quick and I jumped back on. Um, so did you finish my thought? What, what was I think the, I, I think I did. Sharing I did. sharing the resource center with new, rec new employees, yes. recruiters for sure. Yes. Um, really... The whole team. Yeah. So, so let them go back. Right? Let them go back and watch the videos because I'm telling you, there are there is so much good content that you talk about that, that y'all hit on the last two years that are it's still relevant. It's still yeah. kind of to your point. It's like you may say, "Hey, I'm trying to talk somebody on my team into doing this," or "Hey, we're having the same exact problem," and you may see it as a, as an employee with your company, but maybe show the video and share it with some of your team and go, yeah. "Hey, they're talking about this. Very here's five solutions on how we can fix this or, or work towards solving it." Yeah, but doing that with a recruiter, that was really powerful. And they're like, huh, because they're they're talking to trade schools. I'm like, have you linked in your local associations? And so having that conversation. And then on the flip side, I'm finding that as candidates are searching, you know, they're wanting to interview with Brookfield, right? And so when they're interviewing with me, they're, of course, they're Google searching me. Well, what do you think comes up? Hints from HR. And so they're going in and they're listening. So I, I told Becca that. I was like, how cool is that that I interviewed a candidate that was like, yeah, I really love what you had to say about empowering your associates and growth and development on this podcast. And I was just like, okay. So it's it's reciprocal the other way. And I think that was really powerful for me as an operator to get the recruiter to get to the resource center, right? But also for candidates, they're, I mean, they're out there and they're looking. So I think that those are two really interesting you know, kind of tidbits from what just happened. One of the things that I've really loved the most about this show and the conversations, and I think, Nicole, you probably said it, but you know, these are prompts for conversations. Correct. And I think that we've been through so many unprecedented events and so many opportunities to rethink this and rethink that. This is just a great opportunity for people to have the conversations, see if the things that worked two years ago still work now, five years ago, whatnot. Um, and, you know, think about where we are today and if if you can do something different that's going to better help your company, but especially your your people. It's a great prompt, a conversation starter. And we say that all the time because we're, we're like, we don't have the answers. That's not, we're always like, we don't have the answers. However, here are the questions and you need to ask the questions. You and your supervisors, you and your you know executive team, your C-suite, your side associates, you know, your suppliers in the field. If you're not asking the questions, you'll never get the answer. And so I think that's what we've been trying to do with this platform is just pose more questions. That's yep. from your local associations to your state associations to your nationals. Yeah. Invest in the courses, the training. Find people to to be your mentor and mentee as well. Back, it's the longevity yeah. of building your teams and this wonderful industry. And I, I did want to, if we if we want to go this direction, maybe talk about briefly some of the episodes that we have coming up from hints from HR because we actually have a few topics that we're going to go through. <laughs> 
and audience again, if anything has prompted you or you want to hear another topic over again with a new perspective, since we're in a new year and a new time, uh, please reach out to us. You can leave it in comments. You can reach out to Becca, Nicole, myself, or Mr. Billy Griffin. So mm -hmm. any way you can get a hold of us to throw some topics out, we're willing to uh, listen to them and put our best foot forward and try to get them out to you. But we have an upcoming episode called Changing the Hiring Mindset. Mm -hmm. So who wants to take that? What does that mean? So, well, I'll have to take that one because we have Melissa Rhodes with Graystar. She's out of Austin, is going to be our guest for that episode. And just we're in it. Like I just said, we're in a different time. We have to think differently about how we're recruiting, who we're looking for. I mean, I without calling anyone out, I can always remember being at a career fair with a recruiter who said she doesn't look like my company. We can't do that. <laughs> that's you know i don't think we could do it then but we really can't do it now no. and we should we never have done it but for sure we never have yeah. done it but <laughs> no. um you know we need to rethink yeah about skill sets and who we're looking for and what it means to be a this position title and so i think melissa will talk a little bit about that Perfect. and her experience um so I'm excited to have her come on uh nicole you want to add anything on that topic no, I think that I mean, mindset is huge. As you guys know, I'm, I'm partial to the mind, love my psychology um, and leadership. But I think that, yeah, changing that mindset because it is ever changing. You have to be fluid. You have to hire to the individual skill sets or team dynamics, leaning into their strengths. And so I think it's a lot of good, um, just great conversation. And I think that we also talked about the two things we do behind closed doors is we interview and we coach, coach counsel and, and terminate. Those are the two things that managers have the hardest time with because it's not modeled in front of them. So I think by us modeling it and talking about some tips, I think it'd be really helpful. That's great. A fun fact about a career fair. I met uh, Becca Rabati at one once and uh, I the most of the conversation was if you with TAA ever did a podcast, I'd like to be involved. So that uh, full circle. And there you go. I think that uh, five years later it actually happened. That's so, awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. So, and that's also just uh, putting yourself out there. And, yeah. you know, if you want to do something or you see an opportunity in uh, in your industry or your career, uh, nobody's going to know if you don't say anything. Well, Blaze, I'm going to jump back to what you said earlier. You said, hey, if people have ideas and they want to share them, feel free to share them. But also, if you feel like you would make a decent guest or if you, if you don't like speaking in front of public and you, you know somebody that would be a good guest, please send them our way. All in um, told us how we work, man. I that's mean, exactly. that's why we're here day, day in, day out. We're half, half the time we're all told. Well, well told, that's exactly right. But if you're not comfortable speaking, but you know somebody that would be, that would be a great guest, yeah. please send them our way, especially if it's somebody that's uh, going to add more to this industry. Because again, we're all, while some of us have done this for many, many years, we're continuing to learn and continuing to grow yeah. and continuing to try to help mentor, but also uh, going, wow, I get to the end of the day someday, wow, I didn't know that. And, and that's, that's, that's kind of a neat feeling after doing this so long to continue to say that, hey, I learned something new today. Yeah. Here's a good one, too, for uh, cross-training your teams is another topic coming up on Hints from HR. So, Billy, I know you've worked with many of teams, and I'm sure you've had a little bit experience in cross-training. What's the benefits of learning something new every day and a new type? Not, not just learning something new, because learning something new is fantastic, but actually learning what your coworkers do and how they're struggling versus because yeah. people only look at things from their side. They're like, oh, I had to do this, this, and this. They're not looking at what maybe somebody in their operation department or somebody in their accounting department or somebody in their, you know, business administration side. I mean, it, it's it's always good to get people to to sit in. And we I've done a lot of cross training over the years where I'll take somebody for two hours and go, you're going to sit and be the receptionist today. And you're going to see what they go through because people don't realize that, you know, that's the first impression person at most companies that yeah. people are blasting and people are yelling and screaming because this didn't happen or that didn't happen or they want to talk to this person or they're super nice. So it's kind of nice to go, wow, I, that, that it gives you a total different respect. When you sit in someone else's seat, even for a little bit, you learn a little bit of cross training from different folks. You learn so much about, um, wow, I'm going to look at that differently because I, my, my perspective of my little world over here changed just sitting in it for a little while. Yeah. And I would, and, and I would echo that. And I'm, and I know we're coming close on time. So I wanted to, you know, talk about two really other quick ones. Um, so the boomerangs, you know, we talked about retain and retention being something that um, that we were really focusing on with the resource center. And, you know, we, we I've worked with several companies that call them the boomerangs, the people that are coming right back. So how are you engaging that pipeline? 
you know, how are you ensuring again that you're a company that people want to come back to, right? I think that kind of is the first question. Uh, but how are we getting those people back? And so I think that's one topic. You already talked about changing the mindset, of course, cross training the teams. Um, I think this one actually came from from Billy's feedback too. But and we talk about this, we call it the kudos, like catching someone doing something right, but like permission to do good. You know, like really, like how are we going above and beyond to keep the employees and you know, share the good news. I think, I think Billy, you had mentioned that on a call, you'll say, okay, guys, tell me something great. Tell me something good. Um, that you're looking forward. Yeah, we to. always, yeah. we always hear the negative. We don't ever hear the positive. It's always good to take a minute and hear the good stuff. Yeah. But I think that, again, that poses the question, like, how are you doing that for your company? How are you, you know, ensuring that happens? And I told you, I stole that on my next call and I used it. So, you know, so thanks Billy. Uh, but I stole <laughs> that on my next team, my management call and just said, Hey, tell me something good. Tell me something you're looking forward to. Um, and it was great. It was just an, another way to, to reinforce that we care, which is one of, I know Brookfield's, you know, core values is care, you know? So it's like, how do we show that though? So I know that those were kind of the main four. I think I hit them that were, we kind of have it on the pipeline. Yeah. You know, Becca and Blaze. Billy, welcome to the team. Uh, I, Thank I you. Else to, uh, opposed to this, but you want to, you want to close us out here, Billy? Uh, I'll close this out and just say thanks for everybody for tuning in. You know, this has been a great experience for me. The last 30 minutes uh, have been, it was a little nerve wracking going, oh my gosh, I've got to join these two powerhouses with Blaze and Nicole. And then obviously Becca's in her own little, you know, universe because she's so amazing. So thank you guys for including me to be a part of this. And uh, I look forward to the next episode and continuing to, to learn and grow with the industry. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Well, thank you, everybody. Bye. And uh, please share this recording with those who you think it would be helpful. And we will see you next month. All right. Bye, and guys. We